All right, I want to shoot a video here on how to use AmTrust and specifically WorkComp. So WorkComp, great market to look at and review. Um, basically, workers' comp is when a client needs coverage for their employees. So it's one of the most basic coverages that you need in commercial insurance. If an employee gets hurt on the job, what happens? That's what workers' comp provides for. And again, it's one of these, you got to have it non-negotiable. Anytime you typically get over four employees, it is going to vary by state, but usually once you get to at least four employees, by the way, it doesn't matter whether they're part-time or full-time, at least here in Florida, you got to have work comp. So even if you have four full-time employees, four, four part-time employees, you have to have work, workers comp. We always recommend in terms of the starting process, going and doing a fact finder. So that's really your best place to start. So again, you can get our fact finders on our toolbox. You can go here and find whatever you need. So go, so here we would start and do commercial insurance fact finder, fill all of this out. Okay, we already did that. And again, the purpose of this video is really to show how we do AmTrust workers comp. Um, so that's really what we wanna focus on, but just a little bit of back on it. Again, kind of what the workers comp is and then where you get the fact finder. You can see, I just did this one myself, filled out the fact finder. All the email, all the info then gets emailed to you. So uh, AmTrust is definitely one of our preferred partners. They are one of the largest providers of workers' comp in the country. Um, we have them direct, admitted. They're a great company, AmBest State rated. Uh, very, very good on claims, very good on several things. So when you basically you go in through the password list, which is what we just did, and get into the main screen here, and then it's going to be fairly plug and play. So you're going to go, you go create new quote. And then you'll go, and basically all I'm gonna do is enter in the info that I'm pulling through from here that I got from my fact finder, right? So really important, and I'm gonna pull this over on the other screen as I do this and talk, but it's a really important to understand that workers comp, um, a couple of things, is based on payroll. That's probably the biggest thing to understand. So it's truly a function of payroll. So what does that mean? Well. Um, it doesn't really even matter how many employees you have. It matters the total payroll. So, for example, I could have five employees and a million dollars of payroll or 50 employees and a million dollars of payroll, and it's going to be rated the same. It's truly rated on the amount of the payroll, not necessarily the number of employees. The carriers normally want to understand both, um, just more for, you know, kind of underwriting and background purposes. but. Super important to understand that. And then it's gonna be rated on what the employees do. So think about this, right? Insurance is pretty logical. If you look at a company like a accountant's office, which is very similar to ours, very white collar, you're sitting behind a desk, you're doing a lot of phone work, very service-based, that is a much lower risk than let's say if I've got someone who is an electrician and is out on the job and could electrocute themselves. So every type of employee within a business is gonna also be classified. So that's really just kind of an important thing to understand as well. So here we're gonna put in uh, effective date, we'll put in um, the what the actual people do. So in this case, we're gonna put in, because this company that we're looking at right now, they're kind of like a surveillance company. So their closest code would be like burglar alarm installation, okay? So we'll fill that in. They kind of wanna understand like, what does the company do, right? Even though there's lots of uh, types of, of um, class codes within a business, they want to understand what they do. Again, are they a CPA? Are they a plumber? Are they an alarm company? What what exactly do they do they fall under? And then they're going to want to get an idea of the gross payroll. And so, in this case, they've got and I'm adding it up right now. 80, 102 plus 292. They've got about 394,000 in payroll. And they've got eight employees. Okay. So then we'll go to the next page, we'll click continue. It's gonna say, hey, we wanna match the address. We click match the address. The system will tell us if it likes it, right? Like, hey, this is preferred, so it should be fairly easy. It'll kind of let you know if, let's say this was a roofer, for example, and AmTrust, by the way, is really good on kind of your, your gray and blue collar. So when we say gray and blue collar, we're talking everything from contractors, restaurants, could be manufacturing, um, they'll certainly do white collar, if you will, and this is definitely more on the white collar side. When you start getting into really heavy, um, you know, roofing and things like that, not as much, but they're definitely our go-to for a lot of the, uh, like I said, kind of that, that blue and gray collar, 
right? So I'm just, again, kind of following the bouncing ball, clicking the info that it's asking for. Um, they want the FEIN. If you're not familiar, the FEIN is the Federal Employee Identification Number. So I tell people it's basically think of it like your uh, Social Security number for your business. It's basically a way where the government can kind of understand what you're doing, track what you're doing, etc. So this actually is one of our friends and referral advisors who works with us, great guy named Suhail. Um, so again, and he owns part of this company, so we're just putting this info in here. Again, kind of name, rank, serial number, okay? I'll click continue. And then this screen likely is going to start to ask for payroll, class code, breakdown, things like that, okay? So we're going to go, um, and I'm actually going to put here, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit because it wants the DBA in a separate spot, so we'll put that, okay? Um, asking for website, so we'll put the website in. Entity, it wants to know how is it incorporated, is it an LLC, is it an Inc, etc. So we'll put, this happens to be a good old corporation, so we'll put that there. And then we'll put a video surveillance, that's really what they do. I spelled surveillance correctly, okay. They're not the incumbent agent, it's not a not-for-profit. We'll click continue, years in business, in business 10 years. Actually, I think it's been a little longer than that years is what they've told me. We'll click continue. Okay. And let's see, is it hung up? Okay, they want the last name. So I put first and last name. Most of these sites are pretty good at telling you if something's wrong. It'll kind of give you a little red uh, X or something. There are ways to do um, there are ways to do workers comp. If we can't go direct, we'll probably talk about that in some other videos. So here we've got it's asking for the class code and now breakdown, right? So in the first screen, we kind of put in everything. So here, and this is really important, they only have one employee that actually does the installation. Okay. And they have about 32,000 apparel for them. Okay. I'll put zero part time. Then we're going to add a class code. And then really what they're going to say is the rest of them are going to fall into the clerical and office employee class code. So that can be, again, your typical office worker, office admin. Um, this, and I already spoke with the underwriter, and it's a good idea if you're not sure to, again, speak with someone that, like, typically at underwriting and understand, well, the IT people that they have working on their behalf, they would also fall under this class code, okay? And then they have one salesperson, okay? If you don't know what it is, you could type in sales. Normally it'll come up um, in terms of, of that. Sales is 88. I want to say it's 8874. Maybe, or is it 88? A while since I've done this. So this is a good example though. So let's say you need to classify a salesperson. You don't know what they are. I always just go to Google. So I put uh, work, comp, class, for sales. And you even saw one came up for Florida for uh, sales. Sales work, comp, class, good, perfect. 87.42, so I was fairly close. If you didn't know, you could reach out to one of the team members here. You could call underwriting, etc. So we'll put that there. And then we've got the... Okay. Then here, we're going to click if we had to add another state or select what state. So we're going to select uh, inherently it's Florida because of where we're based. Okay. We're going to do the limited a million. I normally recommend that across the board. And most requirements that people are required to have work come normally request that. And then we'll click save and continue. We're almost done here. We should be getting a proposal pretty soon here. Okay. And then it's going to ask some yes, no questions, right? So um, does it have more than 50 people? No. Do they have work comp enforced right now? They don't. They haven't had any claims. They don't do work above two stories. They don't sub out more than 20% of their work. They don't have any foreign travel. They don't lease employees, things like that. Click save and continue. Okay. And then it says, congratulations, your quote is bind eligible. So that's always a good thing. And over here, look, it gives me my premium 1889. So I'll click um, save and continue. 
we want to get to a spot where obviously we can get a proposal to present to the client. 